Hi everyone, welcome to Discipleship in the Digital Age webinar series. I am Brooke Weaver. I serve as the Partner Relations Coordinator at Lyft Church, and I'm so excited to spend some time with our larger church family tonight as we explore what discipleship looks like in this unique context today. So I'm here with Robin Waller, lead pastor of Lyft Church. How's it going tonight, Robin? Good. Thanks so much, Brooke. It's uh, so glad you could organize this and great to chat with some of you, some of you our friends or family, uh, supporters of our church, and uh, who knows who else. So, man, it's going to be a great night. I'm excited to be here, and uh, who knows what will happen. <laughs> I'm also really excited. And uh, I also just want to take a second to highlight uh, and invite you into our brand new studio space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, many of you joyfully partnered to invest with us in this project, and uh, we're so thankful for that support. And uh, yeah, it's just been incredible to see uh, just how we're continuing to accelerate discipleship as a result of this platform here. So uh, yeah, tonight we're going to have a bit of a conversation and uh, kind of open things up and share some of your learnings and what we've experienced just in this season here and uh, provide an opportunity for you guys to ask your questions and answers. So yeah, before we get into that, uh, I'd love to just take some time maybe for those their first time with us. Uh, what's Lift Church? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, if you're just kind of like tuned in randomly and don't know what's going on, uh, Lift Church is a uh, discipleship movement in the form of a church, uh, and we exist basically for a really simple reason, to see people made fully alive in the hope of Jesus by being the church on every college and university campus in our nation. And uh, the way we do that is through multiplying uh, simple churches. And so simple churches are small families of disciples that gather together on our campuses and uh, introduce people to Jesus, serve their city, and uh, multiply more disciples. And it's been so incredible because we've been seeing disciples multiply all over campuses in Southern Ontario. And now in this season, as those disciples have scattered all over the world, we have people literally making disciples all over our globe right now. And so it's a really exciting time uh, in our church, in our discipleship movement. If you kind of want to know one thing, like what, what's Lift Church about? One of the things that really characterizes us is uh, empowerment. And uh, we really, really believe in the value and the potential of every disciple to make disciples as an act of worship to Jesus. And uh, that's really encapsulated in this value statement that we have, everyone's sent to multiply everything. And uh, that's why we do simple church, that's why we multiply disciples, is to try to see every person invited into a relationship with Jesus and then sent into the world to do that with others with a real special emphasis and uh, focus on our university and college campuses where there's just so much opportunity and also a lot of great need, even now in this season uh, of change with COVID-19. And so, yeah, that's that's Lift Church in like a really brief nutshell. Awesome, so great. Uh, thanks for bringing us up to speed uh, just on who we are. Uh, so looking at today, um, of course, and uh, just where we are in the world, um, in the midst of a, a pandemic and that affects everyone everywhere everywhere and so if we're looking at the church uh, in terms of discipleship how have we responded yeah it was a really uh, bizarre season for us uh, really exciting in a lot of ways because uh, as a church we've been really over the last number of years continuing to lean into this idea of reproducing disciples and uh, we've been seeing that happen at greater scale and uh, with greater speed, but also with more importantly, greater depth and greater transformation in people's lives. And so over the last number of months, our leadership team has been working to uh, roll out a new set of, of sort of structural changes to help support disciple making and church planting on university campuses uh, at greater distances and in more creative ways. And so we were in the process of rolling that out. We were in fact doing a tour to all of our campuses uh, in the first number of weeks of March. March 8th, we announced it. March 11th, we announced it on another campus. And we were just finishing that tour. Uh, uh, we're scheduled to finish it on March 15th when everything shut down on March 13th, I think it was. The campus is closed, the borders closed, and we, we immediately knew that we were gonna be in a very different world. Now, it might seem like that was like, would have been very disorienting for us, but in a lot of ways, it was just like a giant affirmation. Um, it's almost like the Lord set us up for this moment, we just didn't know it. And uh, that's not really a credit to us in any way, but really just a work of his grace. And really what's happened is that that idea that everyone is sent to multiply everything, that as we make disciples all over the world, uh, we're just having to do that in a different way. Uh, Jesus, commission to make disciples hasn't changed. 
His mandate to reproduce disciples hasn't changed. His promise to build his church hasn't changed. And so we're just continuing to do that. And so um, in many ways, we didn't really change anything. Um, even though our campuses were closed, even though we couldn't gather, we just kept going. We said, we're going to keep serving. We're going to keep multiplying disciples. We're going to keep telling people about Jesus. We're going to keep uh, seeing discipleship happen. Now, we did do some things to help accelerate that and obviously adapt. And so we deployed really briefly five major things really quick. First big challenge was we had to identify people's locations. Um, because we have lots of students, they scattered all over the world. And so we worked very hard to identify where are our people. And to our joy, our people... Uh, those that are part of our church making disciples are all over the world right now. We have people in the UK, the Middle East, all over North America and the US uh, telling people about Jesus. And they're engaging with their regular uh, simple churches, their disciple making families through online platforms, but they're also able to reach further than we've ever been able to reach before. So in some ways that's been really exciting, but it was a big project trying to track down hundreds of people with a really simple question, where are you? Uh, the second thing we did was we provided a ton of coaching and resourcing to our Simple Church leaders. Um, we have deployed, uh, I mean, hundreds of hours of work just to make sure our Simple Church leaders know what they're doing and have clear direction. And so our leadership team has really just done a tremendous job there. Uh, third thing we had to do was, uh, these are young leaders, and so give them a lot of coaching and uh, support and encouragement on how to lead through crisis. Um, for most people in our church, this is the first real crisis that they've had to navigate. So we've had to do a lot of coaching and encouragement around that. And that's actually been a real joy as they have risen to the challenge. Uh, the fourth things we've done is we've uh, continued to leverage our communication channels that many of you helped make possible. Uh, things like this platform. So we're able to maintain unity by communicating uh, sort of en masse, but then also deploy it through individual people. Uh, and then the last one is perhaps the most important which is that we have really called every person in our church to radically serve the most vulnerable. Um, we have just committed as a church, as a movement of disciples, that the first thing we have to do is ask the question, Jesus, how do we serve? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to talk more about that, but we have uh, some really, really, really incredible and exciting serving initiatives that we've been able to get off the ground under uh, just the leadership of some absolutely world-class leaders. Uh, and man, I just am blown away at the people we get to work with and um, the capacity in, in, in those in our church. And so Jesus has really been glorified as many, many hundreds of people have been served. And so we'll talk more about that. But those five things was kind of what we did right off the hop. And now we're just uh, tuning, refining, focusing, and uh, continuing to multiply. Awesome. So, so good. I love just the fact that we have those five things that we've done just to adapt and move uh, where the spirit is going so that we can continue to flourish this movement. So then what have, what have we been learning in this time then? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really, uh, really good, Brooke. The, there are some really good learnings that we've had. And um, I kind of wanted to give some of these, there's five of them. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking in fives today, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, five things that I was thinking about that really, I, I think, encourage discipleship uh, in this season. Um, and just a little bit of context for where these came from. We have seen a 200% increase in discipleship uh, year over year. So normally this is one of the quietest times in the year for us as exams wind down and that kind of thing. But we have seen a more than 200%, depending where you take the measure, that's, that's the most conservative measure. It might be as high as 500% some weeks in terms of disciple making uh, activity. Uh, we've seen more people engaged on mission, more people served, more people told about Jesus than we have ever before. From a raw discipleship movement standpoint, what we see in, 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 in the, the raw data that we get from our teams and also the stories that we're getting back is that we're basically having more effect and more impact than we've ever had before. And these five learnings have really kind of come out of observing God. What have, you, what have you been teaching us? And so the first one is this, that when we talk about discipleship, it is absolutely critical that we are clear on what we mean when we say discipleship. Discipleship is like this catch-all term. It's like almost trendy to talk about it. Um, but discipleship is not a trendy or a new idea. It was Jesus' idea. It's ancient. It's been the same. It's not going to change. It's the same thing. And our job as the church is just to go back to Jesus. What have you called us to? And so one of the things that we do is we're, we're, we are, as a movement of disciples, ruthlessly clear on what we mean when we say discipleship. Mm -hmm. And it's this. For us, discipleship is glorifying God by following and being transformed by Jesus while inviting, modeling, training, and empowering others to do likewise. Really, discipleship is 
this end goal, the purpose of it is not about us, it's about glorifying God. And how do we do that? Well, we see transformation in our lives and we see that transformation multiplied into others through inviting, modeling, training, and empowering. And it's that clarity around discipleship. That is the one thing we do. There's a lot of things we could have been tempted to do as a church, but that is the one thing we do. And I'll share just an honest kind of example of this. Um, I love good production, I love good media, I love good communication, and I love good music. Um, it's just something that I, I personally have an interest in. And uh, I was so blown away at just the, the sheer creativity of churches uh, all over the world as they produce the media. And I remember I was hopping online some churches right away, and, uh, and I saw like just some incredible productions done in really creative ways to honor the rules but be creative. And I was like, man, we, we should do this, we should do that. And then I just felt God remind me, say, Robin, I've not called you to lead a great or build a huge online platform. I've called you to lead disciple making disciples. And just really convicted me to go back to that basic, be really, really clear. What are we about? We're about multiplying disciples. And so, yeah, we're going to use communication tools as best we can, but really all of our energy has gone into making sure disciple making is happening. So in some ways, the productions are kind of the last thing on the list because the most important thing is that our people are mobilized for discipleship and that they understand what that means. And so, uh, in other words, let's focus on building not one large platform, but multiplying and mobilizing hundreds of little platforms and see the kingdom of God really use that. So that was kind of my first big learning that I actually, that really came from me personally, but then has also been um, kind of deployed through our church. That is excellent. Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's really just affirming knowing that um, who we said we are going to be, we are. And that's what we're, we're just, we're walking in line with. And I think that, yeah, like so many times we really do complicate discipleship and what is it, but really this is just Jesus' instructions and this is who we are. And so, yeah, I think uh, that's just a really affirming teaching uh, for us as the church. So how about the second point then? Yeah, so that second thing kind of just dovetails right off that, which is that when we're thinking about discipleship, um, in a world full of like anxiety and tension and stress and uncertainty, it is so tempting for us to want to go to answers. Um, I saw our leaders want to do this. They're like, what, what's the answer? What can we give people? What can we tell people? How can we uh, assuage people's concerns? How can we get, you know, build a strategy and a plan? And um, at the end of the day, that's not really what we do as Christians. As Christians, we're not answer givers. Uh, primarily, we're people introducers. Uh, and what I mean by that is our primary job is not to answer people's problems or answer people's questions, but to introduce them to Jesus. And so we've worked really hard to keep a central emphasis on Jesus in this season. Um, you know, our, our, as I mentioned earlier, our leaders are pretty are often quite young and, and grappling with some really complex issues for the very first time in their lives. And the very best gift we can give them as disciples is the gift of learning to trust Jesus in the midst of uncertainty. We can be tempted to answer those questions, answer those problems, but, but that's just us trying to address the issue if, in, 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 like, in kind of an immediate sense. But if we can teach them to trust Jesus, we are giving them a lifelong gift, the gift of a deeper, more vibrant, more robust relationship. And so the very first thing we did, um, I think it was like day within two or three days, was we spooled up daily, uh, every single day, seven days a week, we, we pray together as a whole church. And it has been incredible. Sometimes we have 50, uh, 50 some odd people jumping in on these prayer calls and we pray for an hour. And the best part is there's no leadership, there's no plan, there's no structure, it's just come and pray. And what's happened is people are just, at first they kind of like, we, we stumble, we, we're learning how to pray through uncertainty. And then what do we do? We've just been praying scripture. Mm. Pretty much that's all we do. We just pray scripture all, all day. And uh, one cool story, just an encouragement out of that, was there's a young guy, um, I believe he's a third year in our church, incredible, incredible guy, but the very first person in his family to become a Christian, also the very first person in his family uh, to uh, ever go to post-secondary, and he's been very um, kind of grappling, very sharing really vulnerably on these prayer times, says, hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Mm -hmm. and, and as he shared, no one has sought to answer his questions and and that sort of thing. They've just been, thanks for sharing. Let's keep chasing Jesus. Keeping the focus on Jesus and watching his faith grow. This young baby disciple start to 
to thrive and watching the church come alongside him has just been like the gift of all gifts. And so, uh, you know, by keeping that central emphasis on Jesus, not trying to overcomplicate things, just keep it, keeping the basics, the basics. And uh, that has been a real gift in disciple making. And so we don't need to answer people's questions. We just got to make sure we keep them close to Jesus. Hmm. That is also very encouraging. And uh, just being a part of some of those morning prayer times is so beautiful. Uh, just to begin your day with that, uh, really creating a habit and a hunger of daily thirst for Jesus. And uh, yeah, just watching leaders in our church grow in this season and continue to be formed by God's word, especially as we invite scripture into those morning prayer times. So that's excellent. Uh, how about the third point? So that from, from kind of really centering on Jesus, we started to think, okay, how do we lead community in this season? And I'm just going to give you the point and then kind of articulate it a bit. It's, it's that we chose to focus on missional community and call out anonymous consumption. So we're inviting people to commit to a missional community versus anonymous consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, our generation is so comfortable anonymously consuming content. And the danger in a discipleship movement is to become content uh, distributors, broadcasters, mm -hmm. without calling the people we're broadcasting to into a missional covenantal family, a church. Mm -hmm. And so right away, we started to hit this really hard. We said, we cannot allow those we're discipling to drift into anonymous consumption mode, to be people that are just sort of uh, consuming or watching uh, our content or whatever content online. And here's why. If, if all we th think about as churches is we're just broadcasting information, the truth is that we're never going to compete. Um, there's just so much great content out there. But the church wasn't made to compete in the realm of content. That's not how God created his church. He created the church to be built around disciples that commit to relationship together. Mm -hmm. And so we've just really intentionally chosen to not try to fight a content war, uh, but rather call people into covenantal missional family. Not being consumers, not being anonymous, not just sitting and listening. So we did something bizarre, this will shock you. Most of our digital spaces are private. Um, we're not, they're not public. What that means is that we create spaces that allow our disciples to engage with one another sort of behind closed doors. Um, yeah, some of our broadcasts are, are live, but most of what we're doing is happening behind closed doors. And it's been really, really beautiful because what it's done is it's allowed our disciples to have a safe space for community, mm -hmm. a safe space for discipleship, to invite people in. And then what we've done is we've created all kinds of other sort of parallel platforms for non-believers to plug in and people that are exploring and asking questions. We call them community spaces. And so we've created all these digital spaces so that there's a real sense of, of a family, but also an open door into that family. Mm -hmm. And really making sure that every person is on those platforms. And so we said there's one platform, engage on that platform. And uh, we want to make sure it's, I'm not going to get into the technical details of it, uh, but what's been really beautiful is um, just yesterday, an example of what happens when we just had a, a couple of team members uh, just commit to writing a song together. And we had three team members from three different regions. Um, so we had uh, a leader from Brock, uh, a leader from Guelph, and a leader from Mohawk College uh, work together out of the blue with no leadership input whatsoever. And they're just starting to write songs. The Spirit of God is moving. And it's because they're committed to missional community versus anonymous consumption. And uh, just just one little example of the beautiful things that God is doing in our church. Maybe one day we'll, we'll share that music with you guys if it's uh, time to release it more broadly. But uh, God is doing a, a really, really beautiful thing. And it's because we don't want people to be anonymous. Mm -hmm. The danger that we face right now is that it's so easy to be anonymous. And discipleship cannot happen where there's anonymity. Discipleship and anonymity are the antithesis of each other. We have to call people into relationship, out of the shadows, out of observing, out of consuming, into relationship. And uh, that's hard work. It means that there's a lot of tough conversations happening. Hey, what's going on? Tell me where you're at. And, uh, it's, and we have to continue to have those. Uh, but it's a commitment to decide who we're going to be. Are we going to be content distributors or are we going to be a missional community? And uh, that's a big part of discipleship. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's definitely challenged a number of people in our church in this season. And I think it's 
excellent that we've identified it so quickly on too. Uh, it was just something that, that we had to call out, you know, a number of weeks back, uh, not to be anonymous, uh, to lean in, to press in. And uh, yeah, it's incredible just to see the creativity um, as we've had these outlets and these platforms for community and like you said, a safe space. So, which is also, we've seen an increase in vulnerability in this season too, which is like incredible in a season where everyone's scattered, but there's more vulnerability as well. So mm -hmm. uh, how about uh, the fourth point there? Yeah, so <laughs> this is the one that's really dear to, to my heart, which is that, um, the church has got to figure out how to mobilize the priesthood of all believers. Uh, we talk a really good talk in churches about this idea that everyone is called to be a disciple making disciple. We're a priesthood of all believers, but then it's the ministry of the few. Mm -hmm. And a discipleship movement is built off a commitment sort of ruthlessly to this idea that we will mobilize the priesthood of all believers, everyone equipped and sent on mission. This is the core value of our church. The number one thing that we're committed to is making sure that every person that is a part of our family or on the fringes is eventually equipped and then sent on mission. Mm -hmm. I believe that the biggest gift that God is giving us in this season is the, is the reality that every church everywhere is going to have to figure this out. Uh, to figure out how to mobilize the priesthood of all believers. Um, as I said, we're not gonna, if we get into the content game, we're not going to win. Because God, God did not create us to play the content game. He created us to make disciples who make disciples, who make disciples, who make disciples. And so what we've done is we've just said we're going to commit to making sure every person is on a pathway from no knowledge of Jesus to becoming a multiplying disciple in their own right, which in our mind is just a church planter. Um, and so that's what our entire uh, ecosystem is really uh, set up to do. And so what we've done is the, the primary way we do this is in simple churches. And so every simple church has a leader and an apprentice. And that apprentice is coached, discipled, trained, equipped, and held accountable by their leader. And eventually, um, they're not split. They don't, we don't fragment. We send them to go lead their own simple church. And it might take them four months, eight months, a year, 18 months to complete that apprenticeship. It doesn't really matter how long it takes, but they're on a pathway towards becoming a multiplying disciple. Here's the best part. We are seeing new apprentices step into disciple making right now. Like it's actually happening. The priesthood of all believers is happening. Why? Because they see the need, they see the opportunity, they see their friends asking questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, in just the last week, we've had a whole, a whole number step into that, role, that, that really exciting role. So that priesthood of all believers is so, so important. And having a strategy and, and a system and an, eco, an ecosystem really for supporting that takes a lot of work and it's hard and man I have shed many tears over it and it is not easy but it is such such a gift um, to the church when we when we equip and mobilize the saints for ministry that's that's just incredible there and especially as we see just like you said new people that are coming up and arising to say yeah I, I want to lead and I want to do this right now um, like in this season but past this season and just seeing those leaders raise up to to be disciple making disciples and especially those who are still newer to this and into simple church families so mm -hmm. so good and how about our our last point there the fifth one I think this one is, is really key and almost counterintuitive is uh, we have to call people to be servants mm -hmm. if, you probably are picking up that the five sort of learnings that we've had are really, they're nothing COVID specific because discipleship uh, and Jesus promised to build his church is not really subject to COVID. It, Jesus' church is bigger than this. And so he's still building his church. And so what do we do? We have to call people to be servants. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus has called us unambiguously throughout the scriptures, Romans 6, Ephesians 5, um, Matthew 20, like over and over and over again, Jesus calls us to be servants or even slaves of him. This isn't something we do, it's who we are. And so as a movement, we have just committed to raising servants. Not servant-hearted people, but people who are servants, whose identity is that of a servant. And man, I just want to share a couple of quick stories about that. So right off the bat, one of uh, our leaders stepped up to the plate and said, I'm going to make sure that I'm front lines addressing the vulnerable in our cities. And you may not know this, but one of the most vulnerable in our cities right now is international students. Um, a lot of people are like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I think international students sometimes are perceived as being wealthy or, or whatever. But for most international students, it is a great sacrifice for them to come and study in the West uh, or in Canada. And um, we, we kind of invite them on promises of a great future and that sort of thing. 
and they come and they, they, you would not believe the trials that most international students have to go through to get here in a normal situation. Well, what's happened is the combination of the collapse of the economy, the limitations on flights, uh, the uncertainty in the future and complexities over visas, most of our international students that are left in Canada are extremely vulnerable right now. Um, unable to work in many cases. Uh, I heard one story uh, just a couple days ago of uh, an international student who arrived here in January to study at Mohawk College. And he um, had a family member join him, and or sorry, his wife join him uh, in March with their two kids uh, and spent their life savings to come study here in Canada. And then COVID happened. Schools shut down. And they're basically sitting here going, they have no finances. They had a plan, they had a perfectly good plan, but that plan has gone up in smoke. They don't know how they're gonna care for the kids. So they contacted us and said, hey, we need, we don't know how we're gonna feed our children. And uh, just to one of our leaders credit, they have built an incredible uh, support program for international students. Uh, in fact, Moa College has said to us, they don't know what they would have done without the support that they've received from our disciples. And I just am so grateful, but the need is so real. And what we've seen is dozens and dozens and dozens of people step up and say, I will, I will buy people groceries. Mm -hmm. I will make space. I will open my home if I need to. Um, because some of them ended up with nowhere to live. So we had to move people into houses and provide housing and all kinds of uh, sort of heartbreaking and difficult scenarios. But out of that, God is being glorified. So we've pivoted our offices to operate as a as a food bank. Just tomorrow we have a trailer load of um, uh, cereals arriving, of milk products arriving that we're gonna be able to distribute. We've been able to secure a partner in uh, getting produce into people's hands. Uh, we have uh, right now several hundred people that are depending us uh, on our team and others for groceries. Every it's just been incredible. And uh, that's what happens when, you, when disciples walk as servants. They look at fear, they look at uncertainty, they look at pain, they look at difficulty, and they say, I will choose to serve. Mm -hmm. I will choose to be a helper. I will choose to be a servant. And that is the biggest gift that we can give people. In the face of uncertainty is the agency to choose that they will serve. There's a lot of things we don't control right now, but we can control how we will respond in serving others. Mm -hmm. And when we look to Jesus, we are compelled to respond that way. We have no choice but to respond by being servants because he was a servant to us. Mm -hmm. So just the gospel. And so uh, th that, that is both a gift to our disciples and also an invitation. The gift of agency, of empowerment, that you can change the world by serving others. But it's also a gift as they learn to actually embody the gospel and walk with Jesus by doing that. And so that call to serve needs to be clear, unambiguous, and reiterated over and over and over again. You are a servant. Mm -hmm. And so from those five things, I just wanted to sort of wrap them up in three really quick things that every person can do uh, <laughs> just for discipleship. Three really quick things. Number one, uh, intentionality. Uh, you can, every person can pray, uh, ask the Holy Spirit, hey, what can I do? If we intentionally reach out to people every day, it's amazing what will happen. Just intentionally do a couple of things. It's not about conquering the world. Just intentionally do a few things really, really well. Number two, focus on simple things. Oftentimes, uh, we'll look for the, the magic bullet, the program, the thing will fix it. If we just intentionally do simple things really well, it is amazing how powerful it is. There is great power in simple things. And thirdly, consistency. We need to make sure that the things we're inviting people to do and the things we are ourselves are doing are consistent. Intentional, simple things done over and over again will change lives. And uh, whether it's a text message, a phone call, every day, just checking in, hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? It's amazing how God can use that. So that's just some of our learnings as a discipleship movement. Um, yeah. And so, uh, so we've got, so those are those five practical, uh, five practical things along with those three additional points there. And uh, yeah, I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot of encouragement that I'm feeling right now. And I hope you guys are also encouraged. And uh, so in just a moment, we're going to transition to hear from you guys some of the things that you're wrestling through right now, or maybe some of the questions that came up as we shared just those simple pieces and really um, just who we are and who we said we're going to do, we're going to be, and um, just 
uh, really leaning into Jesus in this season. And so, yeah, I just invite you now to take some time and to drop your questions in the YouTube chat. We want to hear from you guys and open up a conversation and discuss this a little bit more. So if you uh, just head over to YouTube there, uh, we are just really excited to kind of have a conversation about this and uh, yeah. For sure. And so thanks. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate it. If anyone does have a question, drop it in. We'd love to dialogue. What have you been learning? What have you been encouraged with? Um, is this a helpful platform? Is this something we can do again? Mm -hmm. Let us know. We'd love to, to keep the conversation conversation going. So drop us a message. Say hello. Um, anybody that's, that's online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, while we uh, just uh, kind of wait for some of those questions to arrive in, I guess something that I'm just thinking about, uh, of course, because we put a lot of emphasis and we've leaned uh, into it so much in the last year or so, is you know simple church and um, everyone being plugged into a family with other disciples there. And so um, perhaps maybe um, you know a question for those who in this season maybe their sim uh, maybe their churches uh, aren't necessarily they don't really have that that kind of core uh just relationship with people in like in a smaller setting there and so maybe uh, if you could speak to people who um yeah are trying to navigate that and figure out how can I you know grow with others right now in this season um yeah maybe they're just kind of in that consumer place where their church you know has their service and they're kind of just focusing on okay I you know I tuned in there but I'm not active with other um with other disciples yeah, for sure. I think the key with discipleship is that discipleship isn't a program. Um, it's not a, a, a program that we deliver, you know, through whatever channel. It's discipleship fundamentally is uh, an invitation to relationship, and all of us are empowered for that. So if if for whatever reason you're part of a church that that you know isn't this isn't something that they've chosen to do, what I'd encourage you in is is you can be a disciple making disciple wherever you are. Lean into the relationships around you. Start to pull people together. Uh, pray and, and just focus on the basics. You're like, where do I start? Start by praying together um, on a daily or uh, weekly basis. Start by opening the word together and saying, what is Jesus saying from the scripture? Start by inviting people to say, hey, I don't have answers, but but let us press into Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what happens when, when we would just pull people together. Something my wife and I are doing in our simple church, uh, the one that we lead, is we just have a drop-in session where we invite whoever, friends, non-believers, people asking questions, to come and just check to just hang out and uh, we spend some time praying together and it's been really cool how God can even use these really random uh, times as just an opportunity to to form uh, disciples. So it doesn't have to be complicated and anybody can do it. Uh, I think it's just a matter of starting on that invite, that in step of inviting. Discipleship always starts with an invitation. So even wherever you are, even if there's in a program, you can still invite. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking about uh, your third point, of course, on anonymity and just uh, versus being missional and just being anonymous. Uh, maybe what are what are some indicators that someone isn't necessarily pressing into community in this season or uh, just flags that they might need to just watch out for? I, I think one of the, the challenges is that if, if all we're doing is, is consuming or watching a, a, a broadcast, it's really hard to tell what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we really like advocate for as a church is this idea of integration. So taking our lives and actually weaving our lives together intentionally so that uh, those we're discipling, those in our church family, that there's natural touch points throughout the week. Even during COVID, we've tried to create as many touch points as possible. Um, so we kind of have to shift our thinking from uh, church and discipleship as a once a week thing to church and discipleship as a daily activity. Mm -hmm. And it's that dailiness where we start to actually see, okay, I haven't heard from you in a couple of days. I haven't seen you. I don't really know what's going on. Um, so it's really looking to create opportunities for integration, which I, I know for some people may be a bit of a, uh, a mind bend, a challenging concept. Um, but I think that that's where discipleship has to start is integrating our lives together. And when you do that, 
then you can spot and you can see, uh, hey, I, I see some drift happy. I see I'm, I'm concerned with where you're at and you can lean into those moments together. Hmm. And it's kind of neat because as I'm just hearing that, I'm just acknowledging that prior to this season, I actually felt that integration was something challenging, but then just over this time, how, um, if anything, I've, I've just grown in closer unity with the people that I am in caring for and walking with as disciples. And it's been really cool. Just the fact that we're consistently in regular contact and communication, uh, whether it is in time in the word or just other creative ways that we're spending time together. And so, yeah, I just want to encourage you in that as well. Um, yeah. And how about, I guess if we're looking at, um, really just the call to be a servant, um, what are some ways that people could look for need, um, right now? How can they look for need? That's, that's, that is an awesome question. Uh, there's need all around. Um, there's need globally and there's need locally. And so I'll start globally. Um, right now there's, if, especially if people are of means, we've been really calling our church and whoever we can get a hold of to just encourage them to continue to support and lean into uh, organizations that are doing good work. Of course, we're one of those organizations that has benefited really well, but not just us, like across the world, there are incredible organizations that are really saying we need that financial support. And so that's a really good starting place for a lot of people. It's, uh, I think it's the starting place, it's not the ending place, but uh, it's to start by saying, hey, how can, we, how can we invest financially to make sure there's the fuel to keep the work that's already happening, happening. But then I think we have to look and say, God, well, who is around me? Who have you positioned into my life? Who can I influence? Who, who do I have access to? Who can I get access to? And so uh, I think a, a starting place on the servant thing is actually just going through your phone and saying, who can I text message? Uh, who might be vulnerable? Who's alone? Looking at that, um, that person who lives by themselves, that, that mom who's probably exhausted, uh, asking the question, how can you serve them in this mm -hmm. season? Uh, and it might go beyond that to say, hey, I, I live in a city that has lots of vulnerable people, um, whether it's international students or people um, that may be homeless or under different financial situations. Uh, it's saying, how can I serve them? Mm -hmm. And then finding people that are doing good work and coming alongside them and saying, hey, I'm willing to lean in to put sweat equity or financial equity behind it uh, would be sort of a couple great opportunities. But it's got to, I think, I really should have started with this. It's got to come from a place of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that we have to pray until we move, but we need to pray and move together. Mm -hmm. Pray and move, pray and step, pray and step together and watch Jesus open doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just thinking of that prayer piece as well, I think what you were saying earlier is just when we look at Jesus uh, and we just see him modeling a servant perfectly well, um, it should really lead us uh, to want to do the same and um, just the love that we have for Jesus, um, that we would do anything, you know, to, to walk in step with him and to follow him as we um, continue to just, um, yeah, be refined and um, be made more holy and more like him through this season um, and really using that season to develop it. And I think that a lot of that too, when it comes to just who can I reach out to, it's the simple stuff. Like that's just speaking to that. Um, and with consistency, I know that myself, I kind of had, I actually had to set like a rhythm in place where I, I made like to do's to, you know, reach out to this person, to pray for this person. Yeah. Because you have to. Yeah. Simple, mm -hmm. intentional things done consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you guys, if there are anything that, any things that come up that, you know, uh, you have questions on or maybe even just a thought feel free to just drop them there uh in the chat um yeah we'd love to hear from you guys as well and some of the some of the things that you're maybe even learning during this time as well one of the uh one of the cool things i was going to add just while we wait to see if anyone wants to jump in was just the power of partnerships um mm -hmm. we've been working alongside some really incredible organizations uh, Hamilton International Students uh, is one of been just an incredible partner and uh, just looking to build bridges wherever we can. This has not been a work that we've done on our own, but it's been a work of partnership uh, across the board. So uh, just huge shout out and thanks to those that have partnered with us um, and have joined and said, hey, I'm willing to, to, to be present, to show up, to put the work in alongside us. And that's been incredible as the kingdom of God. We've seen people be willing to put down their own kingdoms 
and just say, how can we serve? How can we bless others? And so uh, the Power Partnerships has been actually really incredible. We're not doing this alone. We're doing this alongside some really incredible uh, disciples and disciple makers from all, all over the world. So it's been really exciting in that regard. Absolutely. So, uh, so of course, we've looked at a, a number of things, and uh, we've got those five teachings along with some three practical things. And I guess if you could emphasize anything, like hit something home the hardest right now, what would that be to those who really just want to know? <laughs> oh, you're going to put me on the spot. Oh, that's so much of a hard question. Uh, oh, and, um, all five of them. Ah. Oh, no, that's a, that's a cop-out. Um, I, I think it's got to be centered on Jesus mm. um, because everything else flows from there, right? Like the call to be a disciple, the call to uh, focus on discipleships, the call to uh, covenantal missional community, the call to being a servant. All of that is a direct uh, byproduct or extension or result of relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, if we start with relationship with Jesus, start by going back to the gospel and say, Jesus, who are you? Mm. I mean, you can't read the Sermon on the Mount and not come to the conclusions that we've come to. You can't read Matthew 20 uh, and go like, oh, it's, we're not called to be served. Like, it, it's, it's just, it is, it's there. It's unambiguous. It's, there's nothing we can do about it except say, I come to you, Lord, in obedience. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that, that would be the starting place. Everything goes back to Jesus, who are you and how do I be like you? And then everything else will flow from there. So, so good. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that that can really just be your encouragement tonight. If you take anything away that, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, who are you? And, and how can I be more like you in this time? And um, yeah, I, I can definitely camp on that encouragement if I, <laughs> if I had anything as well. Um, yeah, so I think on that note, we will uh, wrap things up for our evening tonight. I just want to thank you guys for tuning in with us and having a conversation on how we can continue to foster health, cultivate unity, and accelerate discipleship in this season right now uh, as the church. And uh, I hope you are encouraged by just some of our learnings from what we've experienced over the past number of weeks. And uh, just a reminder, next week, meet us right here again, and we're going to look at leading through digital communication. Know that you can always also join us on a Sunday for our live stream gathering right on YouTube at 4 p.m. I'm just going to pass things back to Robin, so he's going to close our night in prayer. Awesome. Thanks, Brooke. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you're building your church. And God, I just pray that what we talked about tonight would be an encouragement to whoever's watching and uh, wherever they are. Lord, I pray that you would continue to build your church there as you are here at Lift Church. God, I thank you that you are good, you are sovereign, you are in control. We trust you and we love you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for tuning in with us. Have a great night and we'll see you soon.